Traditionally, we believe that we, if we burn the hill, then it makes more fertile soil. That's what we believe. So is it best way to do or not best way to do? That's, that's the questions mm. we have. Mm. That's a good question. It's been practiced all over the earth since thousands of years. That same way, in different, even on the flat ground to burn as well. In our country, they still burn from some places to release the uh, material for the food, for the plants. However, the problem on the mountainside is that when the rain comes, it can wash it away very easily because it is nothing to hold it. It will wash away. That's one reason. The second reason is because that uh, material is no longer useful for feeding the microorganism which create the soil. It's all in a form that is not good for them. Because we need to come up with a better way that is sustainable. And there are better ways, for example, growing uh, fruit trees and timber trees and selectively harvesting them. But that means we have to change the way we live, and that's not easy. I, I appreciate that is a difficult transition for people to make. The big forest trees need to be left, uh, the mother-father tree for making the seeds, for the seedlings to grow, and why it's important to protect from the goats and the many animals, because otherwise the little babies get eaten and the forest will never regenerate properly to protect the earth. That is a God's given work for us to do, protect all of his creation to make sure it flourish. Not just so we can look at it, but so it provide for us as well, and also provide for all the other animals. So when the trees are here with the big roots, they are holding all of the land together, and like a binding and connecting all of the earth together, and when they go, you can see what can happen. These little gullies become a big rocky creek and start to erode and wash away the soil. There's nothing to hold it. The roots are gone. The small bushes are gone here. And the water goes very fast. But when the plants are there, it slows down and filters and keeps the water clean. When they're not there, the water gets dirty because it starts to wash all the silt and the clay and the sand start to move. The beginnings of erosion. The, the forest is God's covering for the earth to protect it. So we can use it, but we need to use it wisely and carefully, remembering why it is there. When we let the forest regenerate, it starts to hold and protect and connect and restore the land. And that is the Father's heart, to restore and make the earth fruitful. So God has made a cycle in the forest to make it a circle so it continually is renewed, that the forest continually replenish with its own food supply and also to cover the earth to conserve the water in it. So this, the trees have leaves and a small branch and they keep on slowly coming down to the earth and covering it and protecting it and making food for the insects and all the microorganisms to live on. That is their food supply, that is their rice. <laughs> they love it. So this is the secret of farming the natural way, is creating a supply of organic material. And we create this by two ways. By copying the mulch, we call this mulch. And we create compost. And all over the world where anybody copies these ways, the ground becomes very fruitful. It takes perseverance and practice and copying what is you see around you, using what God provides around you. Very simple. You don't have to buy anything from the shop. Oh my God. Just... So where, where did you get the soil from, Nino? This soil I got from the from my oh. garden, which has been already cultivated. Oh, good. That's what we want. We want to use cultivated soil because that's an example of what happens when you over-cultivate that the soil has got a problem. We're trying to make these uh, 
soil slopes as much mm -hmm. like the real problem as possible <laughs> where the soil has been over cultivated so there's not big <laughs> clods in it usually it's quite fine <laughs> and all um, erodible <laughs> these boxes have both got the exactly the same soil and the same slope to the same level amount the soil you see is quite uh, dusty quite light and if it dries out a lot it is easy to blow away in the wind and wash away in the rain it has a bit of rocks in it still and a, f a few bits of clay it's mostly a lot of clay in this soil because we're on the side of a mountain we are going to cover one of them with what we call mulch this is uh what is this nino it's a rice hay rice hay like a rice straw it's not quite dry yet still some green some dry leaves are okay but for this particular demonstration rice straw is good you could use wheat or any other crop which has got the stalks like this okay so you see now it's more or less uh, covered okay and it's not covered yeah we put a cross like this if you put this way then the water runs along the stems and doesn't make so much difference so if you ever mulch you put across across the hill it doesn't even have to be as thick as this we put it on thick because we have plenty if you don't have much even a small amount is still good this is a make-believe thunderstorm heavy rain okay so here comes the first thunderstorm I've got no idea how this will go because every soil is different all over the world so I don't know what will happen either okay so the both of the boxes will get exactly the same amount of water the same thunderstorm on each one Speed rock. Now we have the one covered with the mulch. This soil here has got no capacity to hold water, but nor has that either. They are both very poor quality soil. How I can tell is it's just clay and rocks, a lot of rock. So it is very, very little organic matter. So the only way you could grow healthy crop in this is to put manure on it, which is what you do. If you didn't do that, you would hardly get anything to grow. Where does the water go from the land when it rains? Where does it go? The river, correct, it goes in the river. So if you were living beside this river from this field, what would your river do compared to this river? Yes, the river comes up very fast because you see when this rain came, it came very quickly after a while. This one very slowly and steadily. So when that happens, the river here rises fast and goes down fast and causes damage, much damage. So one of the reasons why there is so much flooding damage all over the world, but especially somewhere like Nagaland and Assam, is because this is the problem. The mountains have no proper cover left and the landslide, the erosion, the water comes very fast and so the rivers rise fast carrying a lot of this and so they rise even higher because they're not just carrying the water they're carrying all this as well which takes a lot of space up so when you protect the land with cover forest grass mulch whatever way you do trees 
the rivers are much more stable, the flooding is not so bad, and the fish are happier, and the farmer keeps his soil. Because the moment you're giving your soil to your friends in Assam, if, I hope they're your friends. Because you must, they must be your friends, otherwise why would you give them all your best soil? When I look at your soil here, you tell me that there's no topsoil left. It's all gone. That is actually the subsoil. One day, long time ago, there was a big forest here, and under the forest was a layer, which is the topsoil. It's all gone. So when you start farming God's way with the mulching, the compost, protecting the land, you recreate the topsoil again and become fertile. Many farmers use chemical fertilizer, right? And pesticides. So that is in the soil. So when the rain comes, where does the fertilizer go? The fertilizer go in the water to the river and make the river polluted. So you cannot drink the water safely any longer. That is very important. All over the world this problem has happened. That you would not drink that water. You would not drink that unless you filter it. But you can filter out sediment, but you cannot filter out chemicals very easily. Much more difficult. But then uh, what happens when the sun shines on this soil and this soil? The one without the mulch will become drier. Yes. Because of the dirty. This, you yes, said yourself, so one dry. dries quicker <laughs> and it's hot, gets hot. Some soils like this become so hot you can hardly touch them. In uh, lowland India, it's very common. So what lives in the soil? We have only hardly talked about it yet, but what lives in the soil? If the soil is healthy, it's not, but if it was, what lives in the soil? Microorganisms. Yes, microorganisms, tiny animals, millions, billions, billions of them. They do not like being cooked. We don't either. <laughs> And that's what happens, they get cooked. But in this place, it's like a perfect house for them. Well, not perfect, but a good one. Because when the sun is shining, it's cool. They have a shade, shady roof. And when it's cold, they are protected. It's not so cold. So they have a nice, protected, safe place. Not too hot, not too cold. <coughs> and they love that, so they multiply. If you walk on soil, animals or us or tractor, it becomes hard. Like Jenny said, the hard soil. And then the air cannot be in it, the water doesn't go in, and becomes very infertile. But if you cover it like this, the soil does not get compacted and it stays open to receive the blessing of rain and everything else. Another thing, when we cover the soil, the mulch helps with weeds because the, the weed seeds in the soil have no light, hardly any, so most of them don't grow. You've got much less work weeding. So the mulch saves you money, less time weeding, and less fertilizer wasting. And it also saves a lot of work, less work. Copying God's way is more restful. In the beginning, you need more work because you have to collect the mulch. But that's only a short time. After that, we keep on practicing this way, and after a while you find less work.